Hey, good to see everybody back today. We have today the popular new light on the market, the Aperture 300D Mark II, and I've got the 120D Mark II as well. So, oh yeah, and we've got a 400 watt Cobalt HMI. So, of course, we're gonna go put these lenses out on a light meter and see what they do tonight in the secret test lab. But let's just take a quick look at this light. I'm not gonna read you the specs. I think you're smart enough to know those already. Um, let's just take a look at a couple of the really obvious differences here. One is that the body of this light is nearly twice the size of the 120D. It's also a lot heavier. Check out the cases down here. Remember when I compared the case of the HMI, the 200 watt HMI to the 120D and they were pretty close to similar in size. The 300D case is a monster compared to these two. Very similar to size and weight of a 400 watt HMI, at least if you have that compact black cobalt case. I have a big silver thermodyne case, which is much bigger and heavier, but I also have more stuff in it. Speaking of stuff, that brings me up to a really important point about these supplied cases. I mean, they're a good value on the surface. They make great shipping containers. They also add to the cost of the item because these aren't made for free. You're paying for the case. And my big issue with these is they're never big enough. All right, they fit the light and the accessories just fine. And usually they'll have just a little bit of extra room, but realistically, if you wanna throw the Fresnel in, if you wanna throw the reflector in, um, a larger cable, if you wanna throw the barn doors in, uh, check it out here with the 120D case. I mean, this just doesn't fit inside the case and doesn't fit that great on the outside pocket, which, you know, it kind of should fit in there. So this is something that I think Aperture really needs to take a look at the next time they're getting cases made up is to look at the size of the cases and say, hey, you know, somebody's probably going to buy this Fresnel accessory and they're probably going to buy the barn doors and a few other things. So the case really ought to hold all these items comfortably that makes so much more sense, so much more value because who wants to buy another case that you already technically paid for? Anyway, enough complaining about that. Aperture was listening to me when I talked about the power cord. Now, here's the power cord that comes with the 300D Mark II. And my pleasant surprise is that it's a nice, apparently good grade rubber cable. It's not the cheap PVC that I picked on on the 120D and for a reasonable reason. I did replace that, it cost me 15 bucks. But this cable, I haven't re freezer tested it yet, but it seems like it's the kind of cable that if it's outside 20 degrees out, that it shouldn't become a stiff, frozen, rigid, unusable mess. So absolute bonus point to you guys for doing that. Let's talk about the new reflector that comes with this light. It's very similar to the sort of reflector that you find inside a Airy HMI. It's that hard faceted surface compared to the original reflector, which is uh, more matte. The other thing you'll notice is it's the older one is a little shorter and a little wider. So this is definitely a wider angle beam. This is a little bit narrower. So of course, it's gonna let you throw more light forward, which is generally a good thing. I'm not gonna complain about that. Let's look at the power supplies. Here's the 120D power supply, about the same height uh, twice the thickness. This guy's a lot heavier. This thing on top is actually the Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna instead of having this thing to poke up which could break off. It's also got this nice beefy bracket that works pretty good. Really well made heavy casting as opposed to this which I've already gotten super annoyed with because it's kind of useless and if you can see it on here I've already got a couple of nasty scratches on this and I'm pretty nice with my gear. I mean, I don't beat the daylights out of it, but what I think I'm gonna wind up doing is actually putting together some kind of a protector for the front of this so that it doesn't get scratched up, smashed, and destroyed. And that's mainly come from being on the light stand where you'd hang it and it would get smacked around, we'd get caught on the knobs, but enough of that for now. The 300D power supply does have this paracord hanger, which is really nice. And there's nothing to slip on this. This is just solid woven together, stitched, whatever. It's not going anywhere. So this is all good and great. The light works, the app for it works, which was just released. 
and it will work on your iPhone. Um, not going to get into that too much here, except an app is an app. It does everything that you can do on the front of the control here, except, you know, you can do it on your phone remotely. So if you've got this thing uh, less than accessible, great, that works. So the real question is quality of the light. And let's see if the 300D Mark II can play up against the 400 watt HMI. All right, secret testing lab time. And a little update, I have seal coated the driveway so it's actually more black, so there's even less bounce reflection coming off the driveway than before. Now, one of the tests that I had wanted to do here was to measure the beam angle spread. And a quick test just off the garage door showed that the beam angles of these lights were just absolutely all over the place. That kind of went out pretty quickly. Although I did make a different measurement test and that was to measure the width of the light until it dropped off one stop. And there was some interesting results in there. For example, if you look at the chart, I have a couple of numbers in here that indicate a double value. And that's because the center hot spot was maybe two, three inches wide. So I didn't feel that that was necessarily a representative reading of what these lights looked at in spot. In particular, the cobalt was actually slightly lower in the center and it had a little bit of a dead spot in the center and actually got brighter like an almost donut effect when it was spotted. Likewise, I did the tests with both the matte and faceted reflectors for the aperture lights and indeed the faceted reflector does give you 2x more light and surprisingly the beam width is pretty close to the matte one which was a pleasant surprise so we're just throwing more light forwards more which is great. Some conclusions here. The Cobalt is pretty much a kind of a reference standard light to me because there's so many folks out there using them. Pretty similar in some respects to a Joker, which I no longer have, but this is what I had, so this is what I used. The Aperture 300D Mark II kept pace with it. It was the same levels of output. In fact, if anything, when you started getting out to 20 or 30 feet, it was actually putting out, well, a stop to two stops more light. I was really incredibly and pleasantly surprised by the output here. In fact, if I had to say anything here, the Aperture 300D Mark II was actually kind of keeping pace with the 575 HMIs. But again, we need to talk and at least think about beam width because not all these light fixtures are spreading out the light across the same amount of area. So it isn't always necessarily a fair comparison, especially if you can either make the light go super wide or super spot. I suppose, just as reference, I also brought out the 120D Mark II light just as a follow-up. And, you know, it trailed respectably behind. Being almost half the output level, it pretty much provided just a stop less light. There were some differences based on the reflector. I think it's pretty clear that these tests really show that Cobb LED lights have really come a long way. And they're finally truly competitive with small HMI lights of comparable wattages. I think this has become a really amazing time to be working now and having these tools available. And I have to admit, I've actually sold a couple of my HMIs off while they still have value. My other big takeaway, of course, is that the Aperture 300D Mark II, I think, is going to really be set to become, uh, do I dare say, a legendary light for its price, its performance, its output, its features. It's really an amazing light. Go ahead and leave your comments down below. Love to hear what you guys think of this because this light is really a pretty exciting innovation, I think, in the lighting industry.